welcome to explore embedded in this tutorial we will discuss the a051 pin details the ic packages in which a051 comes and we'll also discuss uh, the internal port structure of the h051 so we'll discuss all this in this particular video all right so h051 comes in various packages so uh, the basic one which is which uh, most of the beginners work with is called the dual inline package so in this particular package we will have pins on both the sides of the controller and it's a through hole part it can be inserted on a breadboard or you can place it on a perf board and you can uh, solder wires or jumpers you can also use a 40 pin ic base and then install this particular controller on that so uh, this is a very user friendly or uh, beginner friendly package so it also comes in something called as PLCC so it's plastic lid chip carrier again uh, this particular package is uh, 44 pin so it's four more than the dip package and uh, uh, therefore no connect pins on uh, the four sides so basic pin functions for all the 40 pins uh, remain same so again this can be uh, inserted into a PLCC base and it can be removed uh, so uh, this again if the, if the IC or the controller goes bad you can remove and place it back so apart from this it also comes in something called as thin quad flat pack so uh, this cannot be removed or reinserted so uh, you can do that by reflow or uh, or 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 by the techniques but uh, this is mm, fixed on the board so there's no base uh, for this particular package so it is again 44 pin therefore no connect pins on the package all right so let's go ahead and look at all the uh, 40 pins that are there on this particular ic now one thing we could observe is the uh, in all the packages is uh, the the pin diagrams are not logically arranged so what we'll go ahead and do in this particular uh, uh, session is we'll arrange them in a logical order so that we'll know what the functions are of this particular ic so uh, this is the logical arrangement of the pins so what you could see is this is port zero this is port 1, port 2 and this is port 3. So uh, you can see that some of the pins are labeled uh, in, in a different way. I mean uh, you have the pin names here and sorry for that. So you have the pin uh, names here and there is also an alternate pin name. So this is port 0.0, .0 and it also AD0. So this particular pin, pin number 39, has two functions. It it is it acts as port uh, 0.0, .0 and it also acts as address and data line. So uh, we'll see uh, the pin uh, details and you know the functions. So uh, to to see it clearly, what you could see is. Uh, the port 0 and port uh, 2 and they are apart from normal IO operations they are used for addressing memory lines and before we go ahead and uh, discuss all of that uh, let me just tell you that uh, 8051 has four ports port 0 1 2 and 3 which can be used for normal IO operations so what I mean by normal IO operations is uh, the digital 1 and 0 we can send and receive uh, logic 0 or logic 1 from the controller so this is the normal IO operation so we have for normal IO we have four ports and each port is 8 bit uh, you can access all of these 8 bits uh, together or you can access even individual pins of the port so 
And now, apart from these I.O. operations, there are alternate pin functions as we are talking earlier. So, this alternate pin functions, let us see and categorize them. So, if you look at port 0 and 2, it, it, it starts from AD0 to AD7 and AD8 to AD15. So, uh, actually this is address lines A0 to A15 and data lines D0 to D7. So what this means is uh, the address, the lower address bus is multiplexed and this is used to connect uh, external memory. The generic 8051, for example, 889S51, the chip from Atmel has four kilobytes of internal memory but you can also connect a, a 64k external memory using this particular address line this is 2 to the power 16 so uh, with this 16 address lines we can address about 64 kilobytes of external memory so uh, we rarely use external memories these days so uh, we'll discuss this particular session in detail as and when we'll interface an external memory. And one thing to notice, uh, apart from these pins, the ALE, which is address latch enable, this is used to differentiate between the lower uh, address lines and the, and the data lines. So this is address latch enable, the program strobe enable, and the external enable these pins are again used with the external memory so uh, now we are only left with uh, two ports which is port 1 and port 3 so you could also see that uh, even port 1 has a alternate function so this is the alternate function which we will discuss in a little while. So this is called as something called as SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface. So we'll see this and port 3 has uh, many alternate functions. So we'll also discuss all of this in detail. Now let us first start with the SPI or the Serial Peripheral Interface. In little detail so you could observe that port 1.5 1.6 and 1.7 pins 1. Point, uh, these pins are used for the serial peripheral interface so let us see that in a little detail so uh, what we have in serial peripheral interfaces uh, we have the microcontroller 8051 or it could be any other microcontroller as well so let's say this is our uh, microcontroller and this could be any other IC so it could be again a different microcontroller a sensor or a memory chip which understands this particular protocol so so in our case let us assume that this is our 8051 
microcontroller and this particular IC it could be anything it could be a generic IC or a sensor or or any other chip or any other memory as well so in SPI what happens is so there's a, a device which transmits on one end there's one line uh, for the device to transmit the master transmit and the slave to receive so by the way it's this particular IC uh, the main IC it's called the master and the other IC it's called the slave so the master transmits on one end and the slave receives so uh, as the name goes it's called the master out slave in and this is the pin number 1.5 on the 8051 now there's there's one more line on which the master receives data from slave so this particular line on the master's end it's called master in slave out so and on the slave end since this slave is taking taking input on the this line so on the slave end this is called master out slave in again the same follows this master in and slave out now this this particular serial peripheral interface it's a synchronized communication so uh, the transfer of bits occurs on on a fixed clock so that both the devices or both the ICs need not keep uh, count of the time so there is a master clock running from the master to slave usually master generates the clock so we have a common clock here so this is the SPI and it is used in various ways on a microcontroller so if we uh, take a case of a uh, controller like the 8089S51 or 52 the SPI is used for programming or burning the flash into the controller and as we have discussed here it is also used to communicate with other SPI devices so this is the only alternate pin function of the port 1 so let's go ahead and see the alternate pin functions of port 3 now similar to SPI SPI is synchronous so similar to SPI there is uh, one more protocol which is called the uh, asynchronous protocol or the UART so again in this there are only two lines one to transmit and one to receive so again if we have a device like this a transmitter and a receiver let me use a different color for this so so say this is the receiver this is transmitter and this is receiver so uh, in asynchronous communication we have a line to transmit so there's a line to transmit here 
and this goes into receive of the other I see again yes uh, uh, so this would be your 8051 and this could be any other IC or sensor or anything so uh, so I'll there's a line to transmit and there's a line to receive so the, the controller receives say on this line And this transmits on this line so uh, on the 8051 microcontroller so the transmit and the receive pin is port 3.1 and 3.0 so uh, and there's no common clock uh, for the uh, UART both the devices set something called as baud rate on either side uh, baud rate or bit rate so uh, this we'll see when we'll discuss uh, serial communication or the UART communication in detail. Next we have port 3.2 and 3.3. So these are external interrupts. So uh, interrupts are something uh, which interrupt the normal execution of the program and uh, they're basically uh, signals to tell controller uh, or ask the controller to stop it, its current processing and execute uh, some other instructions so uh, so we have interrupts as well on the 805 and there are two interrupts now uh, every controller every uh, microcontroller has units to uh, count time and this can be done internally or it could measure external inputs so uh, we have two pins port 3.4 and 5 uh, which are inputs uh, to measure time or they can count external events so so this is used as counter and again these two particular lines are used for external memory access So uh, let us go back and now look at the pin diagram again. Yes. So uh, as discussed, uh, so this port zero and port two, the alternate pin functions are used to access the memory. Even a few pins here, and even the RXT and the TXT. These all are used uh, to external access access external memory apart from this we have SPI we have uh, UART and interrupts and timers so these are alternate pin functions so going ahead we'll see uh, the IO or the input output functions digital input output functions in detail